Hi everyone, Dan Edmonds here, and this time around I've got a Ram 1500 TRX, which a lot of people are calling the T-Rex because it's built to take on the Ford Raptor. And it's pretty well set up to do just that because it's got a 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 that makes 702 horsepower. That's right, the Hellcat engine. But I'm not here to talk about power and torque, I'm here to talk about suspension. And so I'm going to take the wheels and tires off and we're going to poke around in there and see what it takes to change a Ram 1500 into a T-Rex. But before I get started, remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends, all the things. Wow, check that out. There's very little regular Ram 1500 here, or even Ram 1500 Rebel. You know, the TRX has got a bunch of new parts, and why wouldn't it? Because the track width on this vehicle is six inches wider front and rear. That means this is three inches further out, so a whole bunch of stuff has to change just to make that happen. And then there's the spring and shock assembly, which we can see here. So Let's get in closer and take a better look. Six inches of extra track width means three inches per side, and so of course this lower wishbone is going to be completely new, and this is forged aluminum. The inner pivot points over here are carryover, but uh, the arm itself is completely different. And of course the knuckle here that attaches this up to the upper control arm is new. That's a cast aluminum piece. And then this is a new forged aluminum upper control arm. So this gives us three inches of extra track width per side and preserves the right geometry for uh, the suspension so that the steering and everything behaves properly. The steering rack lives in the same place as it does in a regular Ram 1500, but this outer link here is three inches longer so we can move everything out that far. This is the steering stop. Right now we're at full left so the other side is in contact, but if we turn full right lock then the control arm, uh, this little nub here and this little nub here will uh, engage to prevent the steering from going further than it's designed to go. The TRX is fitted with Bilstein Blackhawk E-squared shock absorbers, which are continuously adjustable for both rebound and compression. There are spool valves within this piggyback section here. Down at the bottom, it's compression. Up near the top is rebound. And then, of course, this hose runs off to a remote reservoir, which has the nitrogen gas chamber. The remote reservoir for the shock absorbers is mounted way in there. You can see in there uh, the top is this side and the bottom is the other side. And yeah, they meet in the middle. That's how long this hose is that goes into the shock itself. Of course, these are computer controlled shocks that need a lot of sensor input to properly respond to the terrain. Steering, acceleration, and brake are involved, of course, but so is this suspension position sensor, there's another one on the other side, and this G sensor here, same thing, there's another on the other side, and one in the back. Another thing of interest here in the front is the main piston that works up and down in this area. It has a little extension on the bottom, and a secondary piston and a cup that has two additional stages of compression, three in all, that basically amount to a progressive hydraulic bump stop that's built inside the shock absorber. I can just barely get a eyes on the urethane bump stop that's underneath this boot and the shaft of the shock absorber is massive, 20, 22 millimeters. I'll get this back over the shock body itself. There. 
This is a beefy spring. It uh, is a large diameter to go around the extra large shock bodies, but it's also really strong to handle, you know, high speed impacts out in the desert. It's a linear rate though. This is not a progressively wound spring. A regular Ram 1500 has about nine inches of wheel travel in the front. Well, this one has 330 millimeters. Yeah, it's printed here on the shock. That was just the most convenient place to put it. But this is wheel travel, and this translates into 13 inches even in the front. That is quite a bit. And incidentally, it's the same as the Ford Raptor. The stabilizer bar mounts behind the front axle as it has on the Ram 1500 since it was last redesigned in 2019. Here the link is really beefy, and, uh, but it really, it's pretty similar. This is probably the most similar aspect of the vehicle, although the diameter of the bar here is a pretty massive 33 millimeters. So here's the entire lower control arm from the inner pivot, which has an eccentric. The other leg has one too out to the outer ball joint. And uh, in between, we have the attachment for the stabilizer bar. It looks like it's about 45% of the way out, 50 if I'm being generous. And the uh, coilover shock mounts here in this opening, which is interesting, uh, about 60 to 65% of the way out. Of course, its efficiency will be a little bit less because of the lean angle of the coilover shock. But yeah, basically that's the ballpark. And so if you're Tuning a suspension uh, based on what's going to happen at the wheel, you have to take these ratios into account when you select a spring or damping force or a diameter of a stabilizer bar. All of that has to go through these efficiencies before you know the rubber meets the road out here at the lower ball joint and the uh, tire contact patch. It's worth pointing out a couple of things at this point. For one, that 33 millimeter stabilizer bar that the TRX has is in part a compensation for the fact that its motion ratio is a little less favorable, if you'd like to call it that, than the regular Ram 1500 because the arm is wider but the stabilizer bar attachment point is roughly in the same spot relative to the inner pivot. Also when it comes to 13 inches of wheel travel, something less than a one-to-one -one motion ratio for your spring and shock is actually a good thing because you can produce that much travel with a shock that is a little bit shorter than that. The front brakes here on the TRX are massive. This is a twin piston sliding caliper. Here are the pins and 57 millimeter pistons, two of those. Huge pads, lots of surface area here, and they're ventilated all the way through to the hub on the inside. Well, that's about it for the front. I'm going to put this tire back on and move to the back. There's some really interesting stuff back there. I can just see it peeking around the tire. You won't want to miss it. And before I get there though, I'm going to put this on the scale because when this came off, it was pretty beefy. So I'm really curious to know how much it weighs. Anyway, I'll do that and then we'll go to the back. All right, let's see how much these tires weigh. The, the TRX is on 35 inch tires. They're 325, 65-18s, they're T-rated, which is unusual, but of course, this has 700 plus horsepower. They're 18 by nine wheels, forged, beadlock ready, and one of them weighs 103 and a half pounds. Are you serious? Well, yeah, it felt like it coming off. These bolts here, these are uh, holding on a uh, trim ring that looks like a beadlock. You can buy a real beadlock from Mopar, remove these bolts, and it reveals twice as many holes. Instead of 12, there are 24. So if you want to make these into real beadlocks, Mopar will hook you up. Yeah, this, this is really beefy as well. It's not just three inches wider on a side, although it is that. 
you know, the axle tube here is just longer to bring this mounting face out. No, it's way beyond that. It's the shocks, it's the spring, which is really cool, and the, the four links that locate the axle, which allows RAM to use a coil in the first place, which makes the TRX, you know, so, so good because, you know, leaf springs just aren't going to do what coils can do here. And the links, though, are way beefier than they are in a regular RAM 1500. Longer, stronger. Yeah, this, and there's more in there. I can see another shock absorber. This thing has five shock absorbers. So, yeah, let's get into it. Like the front, the rear of the TRX has Bill Stein Blackhawk E squared shocks that are continuously variable for rebound and compression. They have a remote reservoir that is hidden off behind the fender liner. The rebound and compression solenoid adjusters are in this chamber here. And the only difference here that's really obvious is these are inverted. In other words, the shock bodies here at the top and the rod is down at the bottom. Uh, that's the preferable way to do it for uh, unsprung mass. You have to put this rock guard on here in order to keep the, uh, the shaft from being chipped up by rocks, but they've done a really good job of putting a nice beefy one there. And also right here we can see 355 millimeters. Like the front, this is not shock travel, that's wheel travel. They just decided to put it on the shock. And what is 355 millimeters? It's 14 inches exactly. Now the Raptor, it has 13.9. We're going to call that a tie, but I'm sure the Ram fans will claim a victory, if only a tenth of an inch. Let's talk for a minute about this spring because it's interesting. For one, it's progressively wound. So these coils are closer together here and they're further apart here. These engage as more and more load is applied. Right now, it's sitting on a jack stand, so this is actually kind of compressed as it would be sitting on the ground. So you can see that there's a little bit of softness here for the initial engagement, and then it gets firmer and firmer. Now, out of the truck, interesting fact, this spring is over two feet long. We can't really see what that looks like with my floor jack because it's not tall enough to jack this thing up by the frame and let the axle dangle. So the TRX has a lot more suspension travel and articulation than a regular Ram 1500. Back here, there are 14 inches of suspension travel, and the articulation comes from the use of a five-link coil suspension like Ram has had since the late 2000s. Here in the TRX, the links here are much longer, and the bushings are massive. The ones in the back here are straight out of a Ram 2500 power wagon, although they're tuned especially for this, but they use those because the power wagon also is built to deliver suspension articulation off-road. This right here is the track rod, or the panhard bar, as I like to call it. This end is fixed here to the axle through this bracket. The far end attaches to the frame, and it prevents the axle from shifting left and right in cornering. Remember how I said this had five shock absorbers? Well, there it is, and it's mounted to the top of the rear end through that bracket. It's there to combat axle tramp and axle wind-up, which, you know, normally you don't have to worry too much about with a five-link suspension like this, but, of course, this has a Hellcat engine, 702 horsepower. Yeah, I have no doubt that that helps. It's not just that the axle is three inches wider in this area on each side to give it a six inch wider track width. It is that, but this is a Dana 60 axle and it's a full floater, which means that the axle can be removed out of here, leaving the hub uh, intact. So that's just strong. I mean, you don't see that on a half ton truck. And I, th I think this is probably the first one that I've seen it on. The Raptor doesn't have a full floater in the rear, not that I know of. Um, but yeah, so this is a, a Dana 60. This is like Ram 2500 stuff uh, in terms of strength, but it's pure TRX in terms of track width. Interesting thing about the rear brake, it's single piston sliding caliper, 57 millimeter piston, which is pretty big. 
this radius is pretty large as well, so it's you're going to have a lot of uh, you know leverage. Uh, ventilated all the way through, that's nice, and an electronic parking brake actuator. But the interesting part is all this extra brake hose here and this ABS wire. That's because this truck has 14 inches of travel, and when the suspension droops over a jump, you need all this extra slop. Well, that about does it for this deep dive of the Ram 1500 TRX suspension. And I gotta say, I'm, I wasn't disappointed at all. I mean, I've always been a fan of the Ram 1500's link coil rear suspension and what it's done for the truck just for everyday use. But here in this dedicated off-road application, it's insane. And I just can't wait to get it out into the desert and just hammer on it. Anyway, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, all the things. Until next time, this is Dan Edmonds saying thanks for watching.